I woke up today feeling real sore. Hamstrings, the doctors, really, really sore. I had trouble freaking putting my socks on this morning. Um, and the reason for that is, well, two days ago I did the RDLs and as expected, the day after was sore, but the 48, the second day, the second day is where the soreness really settles in and today I was feeling a big time, still feeling it. Got to the gym, I had kind of doubts uh, leading into it, but after hopping around for a little bit, doing some jumps, 10 sets of three of high jump, whatever you want to call them, uh, loosened right up and I started feeling better and better as, as, as I was going along. Uh, got to 200, I wanted to do something different today. You know, I didn't want to hit 200 for one. Again, uh, I was in two minds whether to hit 205 or hit 200 for a second rep. Opted it up for a 200 for a second rep, uh, purely because I wasn't feeling the strongest. I was sore, I could feel the hamstrings, feel the adductors as I was going through the range of motion, even though they were giving me range of motion after the warm-up, they were still, I was still feeling them as I was moving. So I did that and uh, worked up to that. And then after that, I did some quads and I went home, basically. That's all I had in the tank today. Uh, slept like 11 hours, man. I slept 11 hours, woke up, and I was like, damn, sore. But I got through it. I got the 200 for two. Uh, this is the start of the second week, so the eighth day of hitting these 200 for uh, uh, singles. Um, and then today, uh, after everything, I went played basketball where, with the fellas, took some shots and whatever. Um, you know, with the squatting behind me and the soreness in the hamstrings and then me hitting the quads, I felt very, very sore by the time I got to the basketball court. Man, I was really stiff through the hamstrings. The quads were spent. I wasn't in good shape. But, you know, running around a little bit, man, like basically anything that is athletic just makes you feel good. Yeah, you know, I kept thinking to myself, like, all this stuff that we do in the gym, man, it is so robotic. For a large part, it is so robotic. Even if you take something like a clean and jerk, it's robotic in the sense that it's it's kind of like repetitive. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's the whole idea behind that sport or weightlifting in general is that every rep you want it to look the same. So you're kind of like always seeking that. But in basketball, in soccer, in like field sports, like every step you take is different. Like you 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 know you're reading the defense, you're going around the defender, whatever this way that way. Um, and so it hits the, the, the muscles differently. It, it's, it's hard to, for me to explain. Um, but I started feeling good. Like when I warmed up playing basketball, you know, taking, it wasn't really playing basketball, man. I was just shooting around, essentially. That's all I was really doing. Um, I started feeling good. And then after basketball in the car, started locking up again. Hamstrings are super tight. I'm feeling now like so cool. Everything like, I don't know whether you guys have experience with this, but if you go away from playing a field sport for a long time, even if you're staying fit in the gym and you're running on the treadmill or whatever the hell else you're doing, going back to field sports, those, I don't even know what you call them, like unplanned uh, movements. It's like moving your body through space in a free form is different than being in a machine, being under the barbell. Uh, like I said, even doing clean and jerk, something that is really technical, really, really technical uh, sport like Olympic weightlifting, it's different. It's just different because there's lateral movement, there's in-between movement, there's front and back movement, there's up movement, down movement. So it kind of gets the body in a, in a, in a weird way. Um, because of all of that, it's also much, much higher risk for injury. You know. Uh, I was saying to my mate today, man, like there's no way I see myself going back to playing full court basketball. I see myself getting injured like second play, simply because I'm, I've been out of the game for so long. Uh, I'm much more heavier. I'm much more robotic because I've spent so long squatting, deadlifting, bench pressing, overhead pressing, just rigid movements. I feel like I'm locked in. I feel like, like a robot, essentially. I, I don't have that smoothness that flow it just feels strange it's hard for me to explain it into words you know how i feel on the basketball court but i feel like a freaking tank i feel like i couldn't guard anybody i feel like i couldn't be in, you know stay in front of anyone um and i feel like i'm literally running on on on, on ice lower legs as in like i feel like i would shatter like glass lower legs i, I would shatter my ankles if i landed wrong 
because all that nervous system stuff that we talk about, the skill, the, the specificity of running, jumping, landing in every which way possible, you know, jumping, getting knocked to the side and then still being able to land on your feet, you know, with full feet, you know, strong without rolling your ankle. That's, that's something to very, very hard to get back. And even if you listen to the pro ballers, you know, whichever sport, like you can, you know, keep fit on the treadmill, you can do all these sorts of things, but game fitness is a thing of, of its own. It's just, it's completely different. It's kind of like if you were to compare going from a hack squat machine to a real squat. It's just the, the, the freedom that you experience under the bar adds so much more complexity. It's not just a freaking quad exercise. It's an everything exercise. And then if you go from the squat to the basketball court, it's like, you're like a, you're, just, you're in water, right? Like every which way the tide can take you, there's sharks here, there, everywhere. Like there's no, you become fluid. It's not so much about going up and down in a certain motion. It's like, whatever. Um, it was fun though. It was fun. I, basketball always has a soft spot for me, even though I am so far removed from my peak of skill and fun of basketball. Um, life just kind of takes you in a different direction sometimes. Uh, but I still pay attention to the NBA. I still, um, you know, keep keep a track of the games. I sometimes watch a full game here and there. Um, really, you know, I was saying to my mate today, it gives you an appreciation. Like if you stay away from basketball, like real basketball, real life for a long period of time, you could be watching the NBA on TV or whatever. But when you go into the basketball court and you really stand next to the ring and you shoot a three, you really start to appreciate how difficult, you know, this stuff is that these guys in the NBA do. What an amazing athlete LeBron James is, Michael Jordan. Like, the ring is so freaking high, man. So freaking high. And Steph Curry launching threes from like four or five steps away from the three-point line. Like, it's nothing. It's like a layup. Um, really makes you appreciate what athlete, what, what an elite athlete actually is. Um, and how specific athleticism really is. Now, you know, we say athleticism, but really athleticism really means, in my books, running and jumping. I'm not a runner or a jumper anymore. I just want to squat and deadlift lots of weight. It's just, you know, makes me think, like, why don't we see LeBron and, and all these guys doing squats and deadlifts? I mean, I've dedicated a thousand plus days to just squatting and deadlifting, and you can talk about the results, whatever, you know, good or bad or whatever. I feel rigid. I feel very rigid. And maybe this is the reason why they don't squat and deadlift because the body becomes, you know, you're training the body for that rigidity. And basketball is, not, is the opposite of rigidity. It's about fluid movement, change of direction. Um, you don't want the body to be just strong in one plane. You, you want the body to be strong in every plane. Um, now, I don't know whether my experience is purely because I've spent so much time away from the basketball world. Maybe if I trained squats and deadlifts while playing full-time basketball, it would have been something. But then again, I wouldn't have progressed. Uh, it would have been very, very difficult. Like, you know, I remember training sessions, you'd be absolutely spent after those basketball training sessions. Uh, nothing left in the tank. Um, but it's, it's enjoyable. And, you know, the only reason I went to the basketball today was basically see, ever since I started, you know, jumping, you know, as a warm-up for the squats, you know, I can't go through a, a jumping routine and not thinking about basketball, not thinking about some of the basketball superstars that I've, you know, paid attention to over the years. Um, and so once that kind of thought started rolling around, I thought, man, I want to go take some shots, man. I want to go play, bounce the ball, dribble, you know. And so that's how it happened. And now I'm, I'm kind of like half, you know, half dreaming whether, whether, you know, if I could take this jumping warm-up and if I could uh, ramp it up a little bit and maybe one day hope to dunk the ball, how cool would that be? I've never, I've never dunked the ball, never. You know, I, I've said this in the past, but I'm almost 100 kilos right now. Back when I was playing basketball, I wasn't even 80 kilos. So I've added 20 kilos on my frame since you know, my peak basketball uh, playing. And I can still basically jump to the same height, right? I've never been able to jump more than that, maybe a little bit more like a millimeter. But basically I could grab the rim like you know, you guys will see in this video. Um, so I've added 20 kilos of weight and I can still jump the same height. So technically I've added some sort of freaking power, some sort of strength to the frame. There's just some heavier now. But this is without any jumping experience at all in the last four, five, six, seven years. 
So now if I start kind of jumping around a little bit, maybe I'll be able to untap some of that power, some of that speed. And maybe, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll untap some squatting ability as well as jumping ability. So that's kind of the, the most exciting thing is that I've kind of, in my mind, I'm kind of morphing my, my previous love to my current love when it comes to sport. Um, it's a really, really cool thing. I had a lot of fun today. Both of us did actually. Uh, it, was, it was really, really cool to go to basketball. So I'm going to try and make it a bit more common as, you know, whenever I have time, I'll do it. Obviously, it's kind of hard with life and whatever, but I'll try and um, get out as much as I can because that was, that was really cool. And today I shot some footage messing around with the, messing around on the court. So uh, messing around, taking fadeaways, taking side leaners and whatever, but um, it's kind of cool to see myself playing basketball again. Um, anyway. Hope you guys enjoy that, seeing my my brick show, you know, seeing me shoot all those air balls, but it was it was good fun. I appreciate all of you guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. I'm out, man. Can't do this no more. Oh, one extra shot for all the subbies. It's like you're passing it to me, right? <laughs> Definitely no Pasia. Diva is in half post over there. Let's see where it sets the screen. Diva to Pasia for three. Oh God! Oh, he gets it done. Oh, Pasia! Oh! oh. Diva gets the rebound again. Finds Pasia in the corner. Pasia. Oh boys, I'm gonna stick my elbow in the ring right now. I'm ready for this. <laughs> I don't even have the right shoes, but let's get it. Hopefully I'm snap a femur. <laughs> This video is going to be 20 minutes long. Steph Curry from deep. Ready?